The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, you are at the California Center for Sustainable Energy's Local Government Webinar Series on Innovative Clean Energy Financing. I hope you're all in the right place. Uh, my name is Tamara Gishri. Let me see. A little delay in the screen. My name is Tamara Gishri. I am the Senior Manager at the California Center for Sustainable Energy, CCSE, uh, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. I am very excited to present this first topic for our inaugural local government webinar series on innovative clean energy financing. The goal of this webinar series is to pre present useful implementation tools and case studies for local governments. We have found that financing has been one of the largest hurdles for local governments to implement clean energy technologies. And the goal of this webinar is really to disseminate more ideas and uh, implementation tools for local governments. And uh, we can see that there are a lot of uh, stakeholders from outside of California, so welcome as well. Um, we hope that um, these tools will be applicable across the U.S. Um, and we can provide some critical information for you to start your, your thinking and research on this. Uh, this series has been partially funded through the Department of Energy Rooftop Solar Challenge, which is part of the Sunshot Initiative. CCSC was awarded the Rooftop Solar Challenge program for the state of California. Uh, with the goal of reducing the stock cost of solar, which is, includes permitting, interconnection, and financing. Uh, in addition to this webinar series, we're also launching local financing committees in the Bay Area, Los Angeles, and San Diego, uh, which is another great avenue for uh, us to share information and for you to network with stakeholders in your region. Uh, we're also launching a solar permitting task force with the Governor's Office of Planning and Research uh, as part of the Rooftop Solar Challenge Program. So if you're interested in participating in either of these uh, initiatives, please feel free to contact me directly. And my information um, will be provided at the end of the webinar. Um, also at the end of the webinar, uh, we'll be providing a chance for you to give us some feedback on future topics for this webinar series. We really want to make this the most successful series and um, would love to hear from you uh, in what you're interested in hearing about um, so we can tailor uh, these webinars to the interest of the audience. Uh, so just for some of you who aren't familiar with CCSD, I wanted to give you a, a very quick overview. Since 1996, we've been partnering with local, state, and regional governments to advance clean energy technologies. We're really unique in that we provide a comprehensive approach to these technologies, including technical assistance, energy program implementation, um, as well as industry engagement, barrier reduction, and policy feedback um, as all part of our core services. And our core technologies we focus on distributed generation, building performance, and transportation. Our work has been primarily focused in California, but in the past year or so, we're also, we've been providing technical assistance across the United States. So now to our agenda for today. Uh, we'll be hearing from three different perspectives on implementing clean energy financing. First, we'll have a case study from Terry Vernon from Yolo County on how they zeroed out their electricity bill. Then we'll hear from Greg Rosen on Mosaic Online Investment Marketplace, and then conclude with a case loss reserve update from Jeff Wieland from uh, CCSC. Um, after the presentations and our presentations, uh, sorry, after our presentations, we'll also invite everyone um, with questions to stay on. Um, if you think of any questions during the webinar, please send um, a question in the question box on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, and if you can, please try to designate who you think the question um, should be directed to. And we'll address all of those at the end of the presentation. Um, 
Uh, and um, so lastly, we'll also be making an audio recording of this webinar, and we'll be posting the recording as well as all presentation materials and a case study on Yolo County on our website, which is energycenter.org slash localgov. Okay, so now we're going to start our first presentation. Uh, to give you a little bit of background uh, on Yolo County, Yolo County is located in the northern portion of California, bordered by the counties of Sacramento, Solano, and Napa. Uh, Yolo County is also part of the Sacramento metropolitan area, and Davis is its largest city. You might know it from University of California, Davis. Uh, Terry Vernon is Deputy Director of Yolo County and is responsible for managing facilities, parks, utilities, and energy, all divisions under the Yolo County General Services Department. He has over 30 years of experience in project management, engineering, and is responsible for management of capital improvement projects exceeding $1 billion. Amazing. Uh, Yolo County has also achieved recognition, national recognition for their efforts in financing solar projects. Uh, including, um, most recently, they were awarded the California Summit Renewable Energy Award for 2014. Uh, EPA has also recognized them. They're number 14 on the top 20 on-site generation of the largest green power users. And I believe it was this year also was awarded a leadership award from EPA. So very impressive. Um, so we're very excited to hear this amazing success story of how Yolo County zeroed out their electric bill with no capital investment. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to unmute Terry and let you present. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, <clears throat> this is Terry Vernon with uh, Yolo County. And uh, I'm going to explain how we did our project and, and – um, how we actually produce 152 percent more power than we use, how we generate revenue, uh, the type of investment w that we made, and specifically about the process, about who all the players were and how I got enough support to get the project completed. So Yolo County owns and operates seven megawatts of solar energy. We do uh, net energy metering, bill crediting, and we sell power to PG&E. And we and we did all of the projects in Yolo County with um, with <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we did all of the projects in Yolo County with with a zero capital investment. A um, we zeroed out our 1.4 million dollar electric bill, not just the generation piece, but the entire bill, including transmission, atomic, and generation, and um, and we produce 152% more power than we use. The project produces about 500,000 annually in cash, and uh, the revenue stream is about 60 million in revenue over 35 years. The um, the solar project process was. Um, if you're going to do this, you need to assess your in-house talent. There needs to be one person that's going to be a project champion. Um, you need to select the right project team for that. And you, you need to set goals and objectives. Um, for the project development, you want to work with partners to refine the right mix of the projects that you're doing, because this project the Yolo County countywide project was three projects in one, and um, and we eliminated some other projects as associated with that that uh, that were putting a drag on the financial um, revenue stream. Anyway, the uh, you develop the projects around net energy metering, which is you know you plug the 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 solar array right into the meter in the building, or you do bill crediting, which is produce power in one location and credit meters in another location. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. And we sell power to the utility company under existing tariffs. And um, and because we do bill crediting and because we sell power to the utility, we have to go through the interconnect process. And um, and I'll explain that also. Um, you need to develop your financial options and alternatives and look at them very carefully. 
um, about how much power you're going to produce, where you're going to produce it, and how you're going to connect it to the grid or do net energy metering. And, uh, and then select the final projects and implement. So I know you're wondering how, how one person can do all of this work, okay? And, and what I did is I had, I had the right project team. You, ha you have to have people um, that, that know what they're doing and, and how to get things done. And, and with the utility, um, I had a little bit of advantage. I was at Stanford University when we put 39 megawatts into the grid back in the 1980s. But, so Yolo County was the lead on this project, and I was primarily responsible for it. Um, I had a solar advisor, and they were SunPower Corporation, a very large uh, solar provider that does manufacturing, design, install, and operations and maintenance. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about them a little bit more in the webinar. Um, we also, I also had a financial advisor. Uh, Government financial strategies uh, assisted with uh, doing the number crunching and, and all of that about how to produce positive cash flow and and we ran a, a number of cash flow numbers and of course we didn't get the the cash flow exactly right right up front but um, but we knew what interest rate we needed and what financing we needed to do a positive cash flow to generate 60 million over 35 years. Um, I also partnered with uh, the Yolo County Office of Education because we utilized a QZAB bond, which is a federally subsidized bond from the federal government that you can get through. Um, uh, it's an education bond. And so we did some things there, and um, uh, SunPower actually uh, provided a, um, through their foundation um, a donation to the Yolo County Office of Education for their participation. Um, and most importantly, um, between the solar advisor, which is SunPower, and PG&E to do interconnect grid and energy contracts, you, you need to work with your utility and your account manager if you have one uh, in that utility, and they will help you get through the process. So um, this project, because, because we were going through the recession period like everyone else, and most cities and municipalities and counties don't have, don't have cash, and we didn't have any cash at all, and we were going through budget cuts and layoffs, so set your goals and objectives high. We developed a, a zero capital investment project with a positive cash flow the very first year of operation, and you can duplicate this project in any size or shape doing exactly what I did. Um, we zeroed out our electric bill. That was one of our goals because we, um, uh, the revenue stream is actually about $2 million. It's about $1.4 million in, in, um, in revenue that, that gets rid of our electric bill. And then the other close to 500000 is uh, is cash that, uh, that the project produces for, uh, for revenue for the county. We used existing legislation. In California, there is legislation that, that allows you to do bill crediting on a large scale. You can produce power in one location and bill credit in another location. It's called AB 2466. I believe there are other states that have this same type of program, but it's named differently. Uh, we, s we sell power to PG&E under the existing tariff programs, and, uh, and that, was, that was very effective. We also used uh, government code 4217 for procurement, and that allows us to select a vendor not on price but on on product, and that's very important um, because I feel the product that we used in this project is uh, is extremely important and reliable. Um, and we set a goal to to complete the project in one to three years. So Yolo County's projects, we did, in most governmental agencies, um, there, there needs to be a, what I call a warm-up project to, to get started, to prove to people that you can, that you can do something. So we did a, a megawatt at the Justice Campus, and we used a different type of financing 
at the Justice Campus, and I'll show you that in a minute. I'll show you the pro forma on that. But we actually produced 152,000 the first year over and above the debt service. Now the countywide solar project, which is Beamer and Cottonwood and County Road 104, which is these two and three here, that was a different financial strategy because the old strategy at the Justice Campus wouldn't work. So the financing at the Justice Campus, I brought that project on in 2010. It's net energy metering. We tie into three buildings at the Justice Campus, including the jail. We had four loans on this project. They were the California Energy Commission loan, and we used uh, qualified conservation bonds, and we used clean renewable energy bonds, and we used a TELP loan. And those loans gave us enough, a low enough interest rate to where the project would produce enough energy to uh, produce about 8.7 million over 25 years in general fund benefit. So it, that project actually produces a positive cash flow um, the very first year and every year after that. And in year 14, the debt service goes away. And of course, the financing jumps way up for revenue in Yolo County's pocket. Okay, this next slide is the, um, that's the, this is the Justice Campus. It's a very simple formula. You see the, under the green here, it's called the debt service. So the first year debt service was 755,000. Okay, and the formula for that was, was um, through those four, four loans that we got, and we got the interest rate down low enough to, to make the debt service attainable. And then what happens is you, Instead of writing a check for half a million dollars to PG&E, we started writing it to Yolo County. And then we had a PG&E rebate of 26 cents a kilowatt hour, which is another half a million dollars. And that million dollars put together uh, was greater than the debt service of 755 the first year. And you see we actually showed a, a benefit, a general fund benefit of 93,133. And of course, the system overproduced and high performance, and we actually produced 162 the very first year. So what you see is you see about 8.7 million. Right now, this pro forma was before we turned the project on, and now the project, now that we've tracked it and we're monitoring our revenue, it's going to be closer to 10 million than 8.7. Okay, so the, the large solar project. So we did a megawatt at the Justice Campus, and now, and now on this project, the financing we did for this was the QZAP bond and the COP. We did 5.8 megawatts, and uh, and we have a small solar array on a rooftop building, and that made that totals about seven megawatts. But the one that we just financed that has a 60 million dollar positive cash flow for 35 years was financed with a QZAP bond and a COP, 20, 23 million and some change, zero capital investment. The revenue we generate, because we sell power to PG&E, we actually bill credit all the meters in Yolo County, and we, and we have tremendous energy savings from that, and then we have the Justice Campus in addition to that. We eliminate our electric bill of 1.4 million and we have a positive cash flow without the Justice Campus of 438,000 the very first year and it starts to escalate from there every year after that. Okay, so one of the important things is, is remember the the debt service for this project only lasts for 20 years. So the numbers are going to jump way up in year 20. Um, well above, you know, two to three million annually in, in revenue. And, um, and of course, our contract with PG&E that we sell power to PG&E with is, is about two and a half megs we sell to PG&E, and it generates um, a large amount of revenue, and that's how we get rid of the rest of the electric bill uh, from that generation. So I wanted to point this slide out. Um, we have 20 years of electric bills at 1.4 million with no escalation. That's $28 million. 
the debt service for 20 years is 23 million. Okay, and and if you put escalation in this 28 million number, it would be much much larger. So the difference would be greater. So doing nothing, we're going to spend 28 million, but we did something, and now we're going to generate a tremendous amount of revenue, and we're only using 23 million. So there's a big four million dollar difference, almost five. And if you do escalation in this 28 million number, it could be much greater than that. So I want to I want to thank you, and uh, and now Jeff is going to talk about um, some financing options. Great, thank you very much, Terry. Um, it's a really exciting and innovative project that you've undertaken at Yolo County, and uh, we're really excited for the successes that you've had. Um, I'm going to, as Terry said, uh, my name is Jeff Whelan. I'm a project manager at California Center for Sustainable Energy. Um, I'm just going to highlight a few financing resources and revenue generation tariffs that are available currently for local governments. Um, Obviously, all local governments are different. They have different profiles, barriers, and objectives, especially when it comes to clean energy needs. Uh, as, Terry, as Terry previously mentioned, this is why it's very important to work with a, a third-party solar vendor to help local governments understand all the options available for each local government's needs. So what is clean energy financing? It is using financing programs or products to help fund the costs of clean energy system installations or energy upgrades. Some of the current financing resources that are available to local governments are uh, tax-exempt lease purchases. These allow public sector organizations to borrow large sums of money from capital markets without having to issue municipal bonds. Another financing mechanism is on-bill financing. This helps municipalities finance clean energy projects for zero interest, no fees, and allows them to repay the loans as a monthly installment that's added to, to the local government's utility bill. Now, I just wanted to point out, um, we do have participants on this webinar, a lot of participants on this webinar that are not in California. A lot of these financing resources and tariffs that I'll be discussing are going to be California-centric. Um, so for these participants that are not in California, please uh, do not hesitate to contact um, CCSE, and we'd be more than happy to outline some other uh, financing products that are available in your region. So the next three financing resources are all going to be uh, available only to local governments in California. Uh, the first is the California Energy Commission 1% Energy Efficiency and Generation Loan. This is a 1% interest rate loan for public entities in California to install eligible clean energy projects. Next is the Energy Project Lease Financing Program. This is a flexible low interest loan from a private lender that can be used in conjunction with other financing products. And finally, the California Lease Finance Program or CA Lease Program allows local agencies to finance equipment by receiving multiple bids from, uh, from funding institutions who will competitively bid on the clean energy project, uh, project to give you the best terms possible. So what are revenue generation tariffs? They are utility electricity pricing structures that allow clean energy system owners to increase the financial viability and revenue generation capability of a clean energy system or an energy efficient upgrade. Some examples of these programs are net energy metering, which Terry talked about briefly. Uh, this net energy metering allows customers to receive the full retail rate for generation that offsets the energy load and may be expanded to cover excess generation through a bill credit. Basically, what net energy metering does, for example, with a solar system, it will generate electricity during the day when the sun is up. However, many local governments are continuing to use electricity at night. 
So any excess uh, electricity that is generated during the day from the solar system can be credited to your meters uh, for the energy load that you're going to be using uh, when the system is not generating electricity. Uh, another revenue generation tariff is the Renewable Energy Self-Generation Bill Credit Transfer Program, or RESBCT. This is a California-specific program that allows local governments or campuses located in the investor-owned utility service area to apply excess renewable energy produced from a customer account to credit other accounts that they have. So, for example, if a clean energy system is located on one municipal building and generates excess energy, that excess energy can be applied to another municipal building within the same local government and offset the energy use from that building that does not have a uh, clean energy system. Um, another type of revenue generation tariff uh, which is applicable in California is California Senate Bill 32 Feed-in Tariff Program, also known as REMAT. This program, uh, feed-in tariff programs, allow small renewable energy generators, so uh, their definition of small is under 3 megawatts. Uh, it allows these energy generators to generate electricity with their clean energy systems and sell it back to the large investor-owned utilities in California. So these systems, uh, as opposed to net energy metering, are specifically used not to offset loads, uh, energy loads, but are actually specifically used to export energy. So for more information on these financing products and revenue generation tariffs, as Tamara mentioned earlier um, in the introduction, we have created a case study on Yolo County solar projects, uh, which can be found at energycenter.org slash localgov. You can see the link at the bottom of the slide. Great. Thank you so much, Terry and Jeff. That was, those were great examples of how to successfully deploy financing products. Let me just switch slides. There we go. Uh, so uh, switching gears here, we're very excited to hear about Mosaic Online Investment Marketplace from Greg Rosen. Greg Rosen is the Chief Investment Officer at Mosaic and is a 15-year solar project finance and business development veteran who has developed uh, or financed more than $300 million worth of rooftop and utility scale solar projects. Prior to Mosaic, Mr. Rosen served as Vice President of Solar Finance at Union Bank. Uh, before that, he raised and managed a solar tech tax equity fund for Citi and held various other positions in solar finance and iBanking, including at PowerLight and SunPower Corporation. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I'm going to pass it to Greg. Hi, uh, good morning, or I guess good afternoon, everyone, depending on what time zone you're in. Um, thanks for joining uh, on this call. And I uh, wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you a little bit about what Mosaic is doing. And, uh, you know, I have to say uh, hats off to Terry and Yolo County for just the incredible project that they put together to offset uh, county government uh, energy usage and then to supply uh, solar power to the, the uh, PG&E service territory. Um, what Mosaic does um, is really in the way that we interact with municipal entities uh, is a little a little different, um, but is certainly something that uh, certainly something that we do. So, just to tell you a little bit about Mosaic to begin with, um, what we do uh, basically is we connect uh, solar projects that need financing, uh, whether they be on a, a various kinds of rooftops, uh, with uh, individuals and institutions that want to finance those solar projects. So um, to date we have, as you can see, about 3,000 investors from 45 states around the country. And uh, to date we have a, a, a good track record of 
collecting money from borrowers uh, and, and paying out to investors. And you can see some of the numbers there. And um, what's interesting about Mosaic is, is that we're really the first online platform where uh, individuals can go onto our website, look at projects, and then uh, make investments in specific projects. So if you look at the graphic on the right, you can see now this is for our Wildwood Convention Center project. Uh, there are over a thousand people that invested in total over a million dollars um, uh, in this project, and they're getting a, a fixed uh, rate of return at four and a half percent. And um, so very specifically, the way that it works, it's really a two-step process, um, is that Mosaic goes and uh, talks to uh, either developers or uh, homeowners that are looking for a solar loan, and we go make a loan to that entity. Um, and then um, once that is transacted, we turn around and we basically um, uh, slice that loan up into little pieces, and then we offer it to folks. And the, the minimum investment size is, is $25. And technically, the, what the investors get is a limited obligation note that is a revenue pass-through of the money that we collect, uh, minus a 1% service fee. OK, next slide. So sort of interesting, because a company like Mosaic probably couldn't have existed even a couple of years ago, because uh, with cloud computing and uh, the internet and uh, different ways to, to do online banking and, and um, secure technology, we're able to do this at, a, um, at an overhead cost that's just much, much lower uh, than, than was possible a few years ago. For example, I've certainly had people say to me, you're, you're servicing a $25 uh, investment for, for 10 years, like how is that even possible? Well, it's possible because we do our work um, we do everything online and electronically, and we link uh, bank accounts, and we have uh, uh, a lot of automation. And uh, you know, our platform basically connects investors that want to invest in renewable energy uh, with with homeowners and, and developers. Okay, next slide. So here are some of the, we've done about two dozen projects to date. Um, we've worked uh, with projects, our, our bee farm project is actually a project that's uh, selling power to Pacific Gas and Electric, uh, you know, utility project. We've also uh, financed a project that sells solar powers directly to schools. Um, uh, the Wildwood Convention Center, that's a, a quasi-governmental entity in, in New Jersey. Um, we've also done um, uh, projects for established nonprofits. We did the uh, Ronald McDonald House project down in San Diego. We've done a 30-year, um, uh, uh, it's called the Youth Employment Partnership. They're in the Bay Area. Um, and then we've done a couple of private sector projects as well. And that's really where we focused our, our company, uh, our, our efforts uh, up until recently. Next slide. So you can see here, um, uh, it's just a picture of what our platform looks like. Um, we pride ourselves on transparency and we're heavily regulated. And uh, we actually were the first company to get it's a $100 million uh, shelf filing approved by uh, our state of California regulators which actually allows Mosaic to be able to offer to folks, um, whether you're accredited, which is sort of a high wealth type of investor, or unaccredited, which is not a high wealth investor, a chance to invest. And um, what a lot of folks do, I think our average uh, investment's around $25, uh, around $2,500, and typically people, uh, invest in uh, lots of different projects. So I forget what the average number of projects is, but I think it's about seven or eight. Okay, next slide. 
So uh, just recently, we announced that we're getting into direct uh, solar home loans, and we are making an, uh, uh, our value proposition is not dissimilar to what uh, uh, what Yolo County was looking for, which is basically 100% financing with savings from day one that grow over time. And that's sort of, um, I would say, financing nirvana when you can go to someone and say, listen, you're paying $200 a month for brown power. Uh, if you put up a solar installation and get a loan from us, you'll still pay some money to the utility, but the, the cost of your utility bill uh, with solar plus your loan is going to be less than what you were paying. And uh, we have a 0% escalation in our, our loan. So over time, as utility electricity goes up, your loan payments are going are gonna to stay flat. And then you own the system after the, the loan is paid off, and you get, well, you get all of those savings. Next slide. So um, something that we think is sort of interesting about Mosaic is that um, unlike other uh, lenders, what we really try to do is connect people in their communities um, and community groups. So um, if you start over sort of at um, uh, 2 o'clock here with RGS Energy, uh, we we partnered with RGS Energy. They're a, a home uh, uh, and commercial installer, uh, and they're uh, offering a Mosaic Loan, which just announced this about a month ago. Um, but they also work with, with commercial uh, systems, and um, so basically what we're trying to do is sort of create a virtuous cycle where the institutions that people care about um, whether they be schools or um, uh, houses of worship uh, or other community groups, uh, really try to get together and help people to go solar and then to really have people, give people the opportunity to invest in their community. So we just uh, a few months ago started up a, uh, an initiative called uh, Put Solar on It. And it's where people pledge to make efforts to put solar on a, either on their home or on a facility that they care about. And um, we're trying to make this sort of fun and, and interesting, too. So uh, if you look up there at about 11 o'clock, um, we've gotten some celebrities. So that's Mark Ruffalo, who is the Hulk and in the Avengers. And he's pledged to put solar on his kids' uh, preschool in New York. Um, and um, I actually recently did a, a Google Hangout talking to folks about what they can do, what the steps are to, to get solar up uh, in their community. So we want to be lenders, but we also want to facilitate uh, uh, the implementation of solar. Um, you can go to the last slide. Uh, and that is a quick overview of what we're doing. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. I'm sorry for the delays. It's just a, a, a very short delay um, every time I click the next slide. Um, so hopefully you all will bear with me. Um, and thank you, Greg. That was a very interesting model as well. Uh, I'm going to now pass it on to Jeff Wieland from CCSE uh, for a quick update on the governor's uh, lost reserve program. And um, I actually, before um, he starts, I just wanted to remind everyone, as you have questions uh, throughout this presentation, please feel free to submit your questions um, on the right side of your screen. And um, right after this presentation, there will be a Q&A section um, with all the presenters. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Tamara. Uh, this is Jeff Whelan with the California Center for Sustainable Energy again. Um, I'm going to do a quick overview of California's new Property Assessed Clean Energy, or PACE, loss reserve program that has recently uh, been started here in California. So just as a little background, um, 
In 2010, the Federal Housing and Finance Agency was concerned with the fact that PACE loans were being considered as a senior lien to the first mortgage on a home. Uh, the FHFA's concern was that if a property went into foreclosure, the PACE program would be repaid first and then a gap would exist in the repayment of the mortgage, which could potentially lead to the mortgage lender not being fully refunded. Since the FHFA backs over 50% of the residential mortgages in the United States, they decided that they would no longer back mortgages on residences that had PACE loans. This effectively halted residential PACE throughout the entire United States. There were numerous programs that were up and running, and this effectively stopped all these programs from functioning. Um, just as a side note, commercial PACE programs, however, were unaffected. These programs have been up and running and continue to function uh, as the FHFA does not back these types of commercial mortgages. So moving forward to uh, last year, in 2013, in order to address the concerns of the FHFA, California passed Senate Bill 96, which created a $10 million fund, um, which was administered by the California Alternative Energy and Advanced Transportation Financing Authority, also known as CAFA, to administer this loan, or excuse me, to administer this PACE loss reserve program. The goal of this program was to address FHFA's concerns about residential PACE programs in two ways. First, if a mortgage lender forecloses on a home that has a PACE lien, the PACE loss reserve program would be used to cover the PACE payments during this foreclosure period. So the way that PACE works is people can install a, a solar system or an uh, energy efficient upgrade on a home or business with no money down. That money is then covered by the local jurisdiction. And then this uh, loan is repaid as part of a property tax bill. So if a home is foreclosed on, that property tax continues to uh, accrue. So basically what this program is looking to address is to pay that amount of the PACE lien that would normally be unpaid because no one is living in this home at this point, and it will cover that amount of the property taxes while the home is unowned. Once the home is resold, then that loan will, uh, on the property taxes will continue to be paid by the new resident in that home. Uh, the second way the loss reserve is looking to address FHFA's concerns is if a local government sells a home for unpaid taxes and the sales price falls short of the outstanding tax and the first mortgage amount, the reserve, again, would be used to cover the shortfall that is attributed to the PACE loan on that home. Um, CAFA, who is the program administrator of the PACE loss reserve program, is very optimistic that the loss reserve will be able to address the concerns of the FHFA and revive residential PACE programs in California and hopefully serve a model for other states of how they can address um, FHFA's concerns and really revive residential PACE across the country. Um, just a couple of notes about the PACE loss reserve. This program was uh, recently adopted. It was just a few weeks ago that it was finalized. Um, and CAFA is hoping that it will be up and running by this summer. It's um, just a few logistical items with um, some of the PACE program providers making sure that their programs fit into the requirements of uh, the PACE loss reserve program. So what are the benefits of PACE to local governments? It can help local governments reach climate action plan clean energy goals. PAYS offers affordable, clean energy to residents as they don't have to put up that large chunk of money to pay for the system up front. Instead, that assessment is added to a property tax bill and will be paid back over time. It reduces GHG emissions. It creates jobs as there will be um, program administration jobs and installation jobs that will be uh, created with, for, uh, with an increase in installations in the region. It also creates no funding liability for local governments as these programs can be funded through bonds. 
and it increases tax revenue for local governments. So how does a local government go about implementing a PACE program? There are two ways that have been used to implement PACE programs uh, in different regions across the country. They are the Mellow Roos Act, which is, was modified in California by Senate Bill 555, and the Improvement Act, which was uh, modified in California by AB 811. Both of these acts authorize the creation of special tax districts, which allow financing between an authorized entity and the property owner. It allows the use of available funding from any source, including issuing bonds. And the third is a very key characteristic of PACE programs which allows the attachment of the assessment for the payment of the loan to a property. So basically what this does is attaches the PACE loan itself to a property, not to the property owner. So if a person sells their home or sells their business, they do not have to pay off the entirety of that PACE loan. It instead just stays with the home and the new property owner will then continue to pay off that PACE loan. Um, a couple things about um, the Mellow Roos and Improvement Act. The Mellow Roos Act, the differences between the two is that a Mellow Roos Act typically creates an individual district which with an individual PACE program. So it would be one program that is specifically designed for a local jurisdiction, um, whereas the Improvement Act allows many different local governments to operate under a joint powers authority which means multiple jurisdictions can come together under one PACE program, which can at times help them um, work with just one financing institution as opposed to having an individual institution for each municipality. So this can reduce the cost of program administration. For, uh, for more information about PACE financing, please uh, contact CCSE. Um, Tamara will give some contact information in just a moment. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, so that concludes all of our formal presentations. Uh, I want to give a huge thank you to our presenters today, Carrie Vernon, Greg Rosen, and Jeff Eland. I thought the information was very informative uh, and great examples of how to install clean energy, clean energy um, for local government. Um, I also want to thank you all for participating in this first inaugural local gov government webinar series. Uh, again, we'll be posting copies of this presentation, um, a recording of this webinar, and a case study of Yolo County at our local government website, which is energycenter.org slash localgov. Um, there you can also sign up for an email distribution list where we'll make sure to send out um, more resources for you as well as um, inform you of upcoming local government webinars. Uh, if you have any specific questions regarding um, the Rooftop Solar Challenge, uh, feel free to contact me. My information is on the screen. Uh, and um, for general local government questions, uh, please use the local gov uh, email address, and we'll make sure to disseminate it to the right person. Um, so now um, our speakers are available for another 30 minutes or so. If you have any questions, uh, we already have a few. Um, that have come up on the screen, keep them coming. Um, and lastly, don't forget to take the survey that's going to pop up, uh, should pop up automatically after the webinar. Uh, if not, uh, they should send you an email um, with the link as well. Uh, we really want um, feedback on how to tailor this series to uh, be the, the most useful and successful for, for all of you. Um, okay, so that that's all of kind of the general um, announcements. Uh, I'm going to jump now to the questions. Uh, one just general question we had um, is if we can email all the contact information of the presenters. Um, I believe they were all in the presentation, and that will be posted um, on our local government webpage. Um, 
if you have specific questions, you can contact myself or the local government email also. Um, and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna unmute the presenters as well. Uh, so the, the first question um, is actually for Mosaic and Greg Rosen. Um, it's from Laura. Uh, and it's, uh, I thought Mosaic only could allow investors to be in California, but one of Greg's slides indicated otherwise. Can investors be from outside of California? Yeah, it's a good uh, question. We historically have made our uh, investments open based on different regulations. Um, and um, we're going to be much more focused on, on California. Uh, uh, as we sort of look to, to grow and um, the federal securities laws are, are quite nuanced and some of the pathways there um, are for sort of limited amounts of money and then there are other pathways that would allow us to more broadly go out to the entire U.S. So we're sort of focused on, on the broader pathway but it just actually costs a lot of money to hire the attorneys to <laughs> Uh, put that all together, but uh, you know we're we're definitely on our way there. Great. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, the next question is for Jeff Leland. It's from Annie Berg. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name. Um, over time, as the lost reserve fund is drawn down, does the state have plans to replenish the fund? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so the CAFA is anticipating that the loss reserve program will be able to fund um, at least eight to ten years of um, of backing pace loans. Um, at this point, it, it, that is their estimate. They're unsure. Um, I, I don't think that they really thought through past those eight to ten years. But for now, they they are pretty confident that that will cover. Um, almost a decade into the future. Uh, beyond that, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether that has been discussed. Um, I would guess that since this is such a new program, they're going to see how it functions and uh, make those decisions um, as time moves on. Okay, great. Um, I think this next question is probably either for Jeff or Terry. Uh, from Corey Downs, um, are you familiar with the Sustainable Energy Bond Program from the California Statewide Communities Development Authority, uh, CSDDA, and the Foundation for Renewable Energy and the Environment? Uh, if so, uh, do you know any municipalities that have used it? Uh, I'm not familiar with that program. Um, so I'll, I'll have to refer to Jeff on that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually unsure of any jurisdictions that have used that program either. Um, but I can I can do a little bit of research, and um, Corey, I can I can contact you um, outside of this call and and let you know if I if I find anything out about that. We could also post information on our local government website um, to share with the group. Um, okay, great. Uh, okay, this question is for Greg. Uh, does Mosaic also invest in community shared solar projects? Um, yeah, it's it's very interesting. Um, we are just made a, a loan to a, a community solar project. Um, it hasn't been announced yet, but it's in the southeast U.S. and um, it's actually for a community solar project. So that's nice in that. Uh, folks are, are buying in and, and buying the solar electricity and then it's actually being crowdfunded as well. So it's a great way to get folks uh, involved in the different, different ways to get folks involved in the solar economy. Great. Um, okay, this is a question, um, I, I think it's from Jeff, but um, I, I think anyone if anyone knows. Uh, what is the key difference between PACE and HERO? Uh, great question. Um, so the HERO program actually is a PACE program that is 
administered by Renovate America. Um, it is a residential PACE program that has been up and running uh, despite the FHFA halt on residential programs. It was able to, um, to maintain service to residents um, without getting too much into the weeds. They, uh, they had some different terms that were able to offer PACE loans to, um, to residences that did not, um, basically did not uh, conflict with uh, the FHFA's terms. So that is a PACE program, and, uh, and it has been up and running for, for a few years now. Okay, great. And um, I'll also say, um, in the last Rooftop Solar Challenge program, uh, CCSB wrote a PACE policy document that outlines a lot of these programs. Um, if you're interested, uh, it, it is also on our website. Um, and, and we'll be sure to have that link on the local government web, web page as well. Um, okay, uh, if you guys have any questions, we're getting um, almost to the end. Um, please uh, submit those in. Um, I have two questions for uh, directed for Mosaic. Um, the first is on the Mosaic website, the investor qualification seems to rule out small investors. Is there a place for them? Uh, rules out small investors or small uh, 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 projects because one of the I have twenty five dollars, right? So hmm. right, I, I think maybe maybe the question is referring to the project size, and uh, because we have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that the the projects are built well and the contracts are written correctly. There's a certain amount of fixed cost that we, we have to spend on, on transaction costs for diligence. So it's very hard for Mosaic to uh, fund really, really small projects. So we did a couple at the, the beginning of the company's history, um, actually before, before I got to Mosaic about a year and a half ago. But really, it's, um, it's a challenging part of, of the marketplace. Um, unless you're doing residential financing, it's very hard to standardize uh, uh, terms and to diligence uh, small projects. But I will say um, Mosaic is uh, uh, one of the members of a group called True Solar, which is trying to create a, a national standard for uh, small projects. If you go to uh, True Solar Score, uh, dot org. It's T R U S O L A R uh, score S O C O R E. Um, you know we're part of an initiative that's going to try to standardize those things to cut down the transaction costs. Hmm. Um, that's great. Um, so there's um, a few other questions that are kind of all in the same vein. So I'm going to try to uh, summarize for um, for Greg. Um, most of it, most of them relate to your business model. So, how do you generate returns for investors? Um, and then also, if you could talk a little bit about um, your individual residential solar uh, rooftop loan program, that would be great as well. Sure. Um, the way we generate returns from investors is uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, Mosaic, as I had mentioned earlier, our first step uh, in the process is we go make a loan to a solar project. So, um, you know, just to use an, the example of, um, <coughs> excuse me, the um, the project uh, that's selling uh, the bee farm where we're selling power to PG&E, um, we make a we made a loan to that project, and I used to remember all the interest rates uh, in my head, but. I think I think that was about six and a half uh, percent loan from Mosaic to the project, and then what we do is we issue notes that uh, pass through 100 percent of the interest and principal that we collect, and there's a, a fixed payment schedule that if you go to our website and you you can actually download our prospectus, which shows you what that's what that uh, payment schedule is, and uh, so you as an investor would get all of that uh, uh, principal and interest minus a 1% fee 
So the, the net uh, amount to investors is always 1% than the amount uh, on the loan. So investors in that case would get 5.5%. Um, and then maybe you could remind me of the second question. Sure, sorry. Um, the uh, more details on your small residential loan program. Yeah, uh, what, what we've done, um, because we are a finance company and not an installer, uh, what we did, uh, what we're doing is we, we're partnering with folks that are going out and uh, uh, installing uh, uh, home solar systems and uh, as I mentioned with RGS we entered into an agreement uh, with that company that's uh, real good solar they just changed their name a couple of months ago to RGS um, and they their sales folks have been trained in what our loan offering is and um, we've created it's a, a 20 year loan with zero percent uh, escalation and it's designed, as I mentioned, to have uh, people save money on, on day one with 100% financing of the system. And um, uh, so that's really available uh, right now in, in California and um, as time goes on we will be partnering with other, other companies. We actually also announced a few months prior to that that we're working with the, the Green Bank of Connecticut, which is a, a quasi-public uh, state entity, and we're providing debt to the Green Bank of Connecticut, and they're in turn um, working with small installers to put up solar homes in, in Connecticut. And um, I would say that there's actually um, uh, some really interesting things going on in the uh, Northeast U.S. with regard to the way that local government is sort of partnering and helping to facilitate uh, group purchases uh, of, of home solar projects. Uh, there's something called Solarize Connecticut, also uh, I believe Solarize Massachusetts, where there are you know effectively um, the, the government's helping to get people to buy in bulk and, and get better better pricing and, and make sure that they get good quality systems. Um, and that's been done to a certain extent in California with Solar Marin back in 07. Um, but um, we see that there's a lot of opportunity um, uh, and I think that CCSE does a, a great job uh, helping to facilitate this and there's also a role we think that a, a company like Mosaic could play to work with local government to help create a, um, a, a plan to really implement solar, not only on homes and not only on uh, uh, local government facilities, but also to help uh, in the medium to long term address all the other kinds of um, uh, buildings and users of energy. Great. Um well, I, I, I think that was a great discussion. Um, I, I give, I'll give everyone about 15 seconds if, if anyone wants to send in another question. But um, while we're doing that, uh, I just want to thank everyone again for participating. I think this was a great, present, great presentation and discussion. And um, we will all hopefully see you uh, very soon at the next webinar. Um, and feel free to reach out uh, to any of us if you have any questions. And have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.